All right, guys, I'm trying to get myself into a good mood today. Sometimes it's hard to do what I'm doing here. Maybe I need to be a little more positive. All right. All right, guys. Yeah! All right. So today I'm going to show you low tech tanks. Mine are as l almost as low tech as you can get. I'll show you the 10 gallon, the 20, and the 75, and my six gallon. All of them are very low tech tanks. And then you can get an idea of what's involved to set up a low tech tank. All right, let's get into it. All right, guys, here's my 10 gallon. Now this is a tank with live rock. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you saw my short, but I showed these the other night. There's a, the newest edition. There's three, but the fourth one this morning crawled over here and came up here. Now I gotta keep an eye on it to see what it's going to do around the digitata here. But I don't see any polyps withdrawing from it, and that's somewhat of a fallacy. Bubble tips don't necessarily sting. I mean, any coral is going to withdraw if it rubs into something else, but I'm not even seeing that happening here, so I'm gonna keep an eye on it. Look at the growth on my Australian leather. This came from my 75 gallon tank as a little spud like this one. I call them spuds. It came in from like a size like that and now it's like this. Here we go. I made this tank. It's a 10 gallon all glass or something like that. I cut the rim off. So it's a probably $20 tank. And then I built an internal overflow box just glued it together. Now, you don't have, if you're not handy and you can't build something like that, an HOB, hang off the back filter would work also. You just want something to circulate the water back and forth from the tank into the box and then back into the tank. All I keep in it is a sponge to collect large detritus. I have a little piece of this lighting stuff. I forget what it's called now. To keep hermit crabs from crawling over, astrea snails sometimes make their way up. Yeah, this is just a cheap, I think it's called Placo. It's a Placo cheap pump, 40 bucks or something like that. And that's it. And a cheap heater, which is down in there. I have a Hagar, <laughs> Hagar, Hager 50 watt heater in there. Of course, I started this tank with live rock. So that's pretty low tech. And this is the light I was telling you about AI sold it's about $200. Just water changes only. I'm starting to change this a little bit more uh, weekly now, about 20% change. All right, 75 gallon. The only high tech thing I have in here, if you want to consider it, is a skimmer, but I made that. I think I paid $15 for this candle holder cover. It covers candles, it's about 18 inches long. Okay, I have the Hyger pump down there, air pump. It runs on a limewood air stone. In the overflow box, I have a little filter floss. And then I have a heater down there. There's the Digiton. And I do have one other thing. It's the two-part dosing. I guess you could say that is not low tech, but it certainly isn't high tech. I'm dosing calcium and alkalinity into the 75 gallon tank. I do that because I'm not changing water as frequently as I do in my small tanks and I haven't added Kalkwasser to my ATO underneath. There's my wife. She puts me in a good mood. Let me just check her out. Double heart and a picture she wants to send. Bistro de Chomps. Then over here is the 20 gallon. So let me take this off. And the 20 gallon, this is a, uh, a water box. It's got the overflow box here, and then it's got a center compartment. Now this is what I turned into the refugium. See it straight back there? I put a ball of chato in there. It's grown some hair algae inside there, which I'll probably clean out. I have the Digiton ATO. Third compartment where my pump is, and that's the ATO 
hose coming up from the ATO. So really low tech. Nothing in here except a refugium, no skimmer, and that's that. I do want to make a comment now. I know some of you are thinking, well, it's really hard to get live rock. And with a low tech tank, that helps the process because it's faster. You don't have to wait for a year before you go through all your ugly phase and all that with plain white rock. So yes, my tanks do have live rock in them from the beginning. And I believe that is kind of a luxury. I think it's hard to find real live rock today you know most people are starting tanks with the calcium carbonate um, man-made live rock which have no bacteria no anything so your cycle when you cycle that the cycle first of all takes six to eight weeks whatever it's going to take you and then your ugly phase lasts a lot longer with those rocks because there's so much surface without any bacteria on them. When you get live rock, everything's there already. You still may go through an ugly phase, but not as long, and your bacteria is there. There's no cycling. All right, here's the six gallon tall. I pulled this out so I could show you behind it. Right now I'm just keeping these zoas in here, and I'm keeping these mushrooms. I have not touched this except a little bit of water change. You can see I have some algae growing over there, but I think I'm going to start to pay more attention. It's just an issue of pulling this stuff out by hand, but my zoas look really nice. So, and the mushrooms look really nice. So this is it. Kessel A80. I added this overflow box to this tank. This tank I made, I have a video on that. I made it from monitor shelves. So here's the overflow box I connected. And the same as my 10 gallon, I just have a little filter sponge there. I think I have the CCHA Nano Pump in here. I do. And I have a small 50 watt heater by Hygar. And, uh, this is the Digiton, so basically it's simple as that. Six gallon tall. And I do have the ATO. This services this and my 10 gallon. But there you have it, six gallon tall, low tech. I don't consider lighting high tech, however, they can be pricey. I use the AI Prime 16 HD the AI Prime Soul. I know there's some of you who use really cheap lighting, you know, Amazon, whatever type lighting. I've never used that and seen the success from people using really cheap lighting. So I wouldn't recommend cheap lighting unless you know somebody or have seen a tank who has really inexpensive lighting. What I mean by inexpensive is like under $100. So if you've seen somebody successful, in reef keeping with a really cheap light, then go for it. Anyway, I hope you got something out of that and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Take care guys.